New year, new GM. My seventh grandchild was born this morning, and it's time for me to spend some time with them, too. The Broncos are heading in a new direction, and it means John Elway's 10-year run as a decision maker is done. We're breaking down the big move. The rules are changing for many Colorado businesses. I was able to bring back 15 more people. More people are allowed in the door. But is it enough for these mom and pops to stay afloat? And the election results become official on Wednesday, but not before a handful of Republicans make a statement. He led the Broncos to three Super Bowl titles, twice as the quarterback, once as the GM. And now John Elway is giving up the GM job. He will remain, though, president of football operations. We're joined by our Broncos insider, Troy Rink. Happy New Year, Troy. So uh, the question, I guess, if Happy Elway's New- president, the team's hiring a GM, who's really going to be running the show there? Yeah, there are a lot of questions. This was a seismic shift in power today at UC Health Center. John Elway had a 10-year run as GM, fascinating run, five first years, five AFC West titles, two Super Bowls, the recruitment of Peyton Manning. But then following that, they had five straight years without reaching the playoffs. They're the first team to win a Super Bowl and then miss the playoffs the next five seasons. I asked Elway today, Shannon, to take stock of his run as GM. I'm proud of my career as a GM. It's what I wanted to do. I appreciate Pat Bowen and Joe Ellis giving me the opportunity to be in that position. Um, you know, so I loved it. And, you know, it's just it's time for me to make that next step. And I'm excited about that, too. Here's the situation with Elway. He has got to allow the new GM that he hires to have independence and authority. They need to bring Guys, so you got to trust those eyes to tell you what they see, and you might not like it. But if Elway remains involved in other than just big decisions, this is not going to work. A couple of names to keep an eye on. Adam Peters from San Francisco, who previously worked for the Broncos, and Champ Kelly, who worked for the Broncos and was with the Bears. Two former players reached out to me today and said they believe Champ Kelly should be the guy to be the next GM of the Denver Broncos. For Denver 7, I'm Troy Wren. Yeah, ready for change, that's for sure. All right, Troy, thank you. And there were plenty of highs during the Elway years. He built the league's best offense when the team went to the Super Bowl in 2013. Two years later, he built the league's best defense, and the team won Super Bowl 50. Of course, the last few years have felt like one long low. Under Elway's leadership, the team hasn't made the playoffs since its Super Bowl win, haven't had a winning record in four years. Over that time, they've started 10 different players at quarterback. So... We want to hear from you about this new role for John Elway. Too much, too little, or just the right move for John Elway? Email us at 360 at thedenverchannel.com. Many business owners in the Denver Metro believe their rebound begins today as the state lifts level red restrictions for all of those counties in the region. So we are now in level orange. Restaurants, offices, and gyms can open at 25% capacity. Retail businesses can open at 50% capacity. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez joins us live. And Ivan, this is a moment many restaurants really have been waiting on since the fall. And it's a relief many restaurants have been waiting for, especially since they've been limited to either outdoor dining or takeout only. But for those uh, restaurants who spoke with me, they say surviving on a 25% indoor capacity is still difficult, yet, Restaurant owners are happy to see people walking in their doors. Welcome back. For 35 years. I'm just happy to see that you're able to sit inside in the warmth this time. Senior Ricks has been an Aurora staple. Once again, they're able to see customers indoors, but at a 25% capacity. It's nice to see that they can start making money again and people can come back to work. For owner Jeff Eden, the news came as a welcome surprise to a business that is hurting. The last few months, it's... uh been down about 40% over over where I was last year at this time and we're we're still doing a significant amount of to go but that doesn't add up to a, a restaurant that seats 367 people being 100% occupied. Indoor dining allowed him to also bring back 15 employees but questions remain around the five-star program that Arapahoe County was just approved for. While they're letting everybody go to orange that was in red, they're really not in orange. The Colorado Restaurant Association says restaurants and counties that have been approved for the five-star program won't automatically be able to drop into the lesser yellow level. If the county really was in the red metrics, not the orange metrics, they'd have to be officially in what would look like the orange metrics for seven days prior to their five-star businesses being able to move up one level into the yellow level. 
they need an extra hand to stay open. The city of Aurora also announced a new grant relief program aimed at helping restaurants with payroll and expenses. We have seen that there are quite a few restaurants and that have not received any support whatsoever. So they're our priority. The Colorado Restaurant Association says in a survey they conducted with restaurants, 45% said they would have to consider closing permanently within three months if they were limited to a 25% indoor capacity. Now, although 25% does help, it doesn't sustain them in the long term. Live in Aurora, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. Thank you, Ivan. There is a record number of Americans in the hospital with COVID tonight, more than 125,000 total. Experts worry cases will surge after a busy travel weekend. More than 3 million people flew over the weekend, similar to the number we saw over Christmas weekend. The CDC says about 4 million people have gotten the vaccine so far. The original goal of Operation Warp Speed was to vaccinate 20 million people in the U.S. by the end of 2020. Now, one federal official said this morning that any delays are on the states since it's up to state officials to handle distribution. Nothing has gone wrong. What we have committed to was to have 20 million doses of vaccine available for the American people. Colorado's vaccination effort is proving to be a model for the rest of the country. So far, nearly 114,000 people in our state have received the vaccine. 1,015 hospital beds are in use tonight by people with COVID or COVID symptoms, and that's up from yesterday, but it does remain one of the lowest single day bed counts we've seen since early November. We get dozens of questions every single day from people who want to know when they can get vaccinated, and I promise we are doing our best to get clear answers. Now, Ronnie, for one, asked, my wife and I work at a food bank. We are ages 63 and 65. Would we be included in phase 1B as essential worker? Well, unfortunately, no, phase 1B doesn't include volunteers or food bank workers. However, because you are both over the age of 60, you qualify for phase two of the vaccination process. Now, as a reminder, the state expects to complete phase 1A by the middle of this month. Phase 1B will last through the winter and then phase two, which includes people with pre-existing conditions and anyone over 60, will take place in the spring. Everyone else gets the vaccine during the summer in phase three. Keep your questions coming 360 at the Denver Channel.com. Two of three Colorado Republicans in the House of Representatives plan to challenge President elect Joe Biden's victory in a joint session this week. Congressman Ken Buck is the only local Republican who plans to vote to certify the results. In a statement, Buck and several other GOP officials say, quote, the text of the Constitution is clear. States select electors. Congress does not. Representatives Lauren Bulbert and Scott Tipton will vote against the results. And we asked Bulbert to explain her decision earlier today. The American people know that there was uh, some irregularities, uh, to say the least, in this election, and they deserve a full audit. In our interview with Bulbert today, she said she was concerned about voter fraud, but could not provide an example that had not been debunked. We'll have a lot more from that interview tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. Tomorrow's runoff election in Georgia will decide the direction of the United States Senate and will play a large part in the path of President-elect Joe Biden's next four years in office. At this stage, it's all about turning out the vote, and that includes new voters who didn't vote in November. Here's Denver 7's Joe St. George. This is our lair. If Democrats are going to win Tuesday in Georgia, we just got to be able to work here. This makeshift COVID friendly poolside office in suburban Atlanta. This is literally just my backyard. Will play a major role. Just as President Trump and President elect Biden are rallying their base in Georgia, 18 year old Michael Gusto is trying to rally his newly eligible 18 year old voters, a group. That includes himself. I'm special because I'm one of the 23,000 uh, individuals not quite fortunate enough to vote in the presidential election on November 3rd, but will still be uh, 18 in time to vote for, uh, in this uh, special election runoff on January 5th. Republicans currently control the two Senate seats up for grabs, and if they win just one of those races, they'll control the United States Senate. But if Democrats sweep, they will have control and more power for the next two years. Democrats need Michael, though, because they need new voters. In November, Georgia's Republican Senator David Perdue won his race by 88,000-plus votes. Not enough to stop a runoff, but it would be enough to win this time. 
Michael hoping those with recent birthdays are the difference. We're reaching out to that age group. While Democrats are searching for new voters here in Georgia, Republicans are just hoping the same voters who voted in November vote again. But there is a concern by some Republican strategists that President Trump's tweets about the Georgia election being full of fraud could actually result in many of his supporters staying home. The Trump voters are important. Janelle King is a Republican strategist in Georgia. The Republicans need Trumplicans in order to win this election. During a recent visit to a polling place, though, we found Trump supporters like Sherry still eager to vote. This is the way we do it is through our voting process, and that's that's um, very important to me. Remember, though, even though the election is Tuesday, counting the results will take some time. The country will likely not know who won until later in the week. In Atlanta, I'm Joe St. George, Denver 7. We had a mild day today, but a couple of cold fronts will change things this week. Plus, it's hard to say who's more excited for in-person learning, parents, kids, or teachers. We'll show you how all three groups are getting ready to return. And police need your help to find a woman who went missing just before New Year's Day.